Good morning, YouTubes! Welcome to the Trio of Terror build. We decided amongst the Trio of Terror, myself, uh, Vic Springson at his channel, and Dave at the Weird Kid Show channel, decided we're going to get some uh, Nightmare Maker's uh, skull. We're all going to use a number six skull right here, and we're going to use our crossbones, which I've already kind of molded up. And we're going to take their skull and their crossbones, and we're all going to make a project across all three of our channels. Uh, our only really rule for each other to guidance, uh, to guide each other, is that we're going to use one number six skull. We're going to use a pair of crossbones, which I've only molded up just the ends because that's all I'm going to use, and I didn't want to waste the, uh, the rigid foam. So we've all kind of got our ideas. We're going to go to our little separate corners, and we're going to see what kind of creepy things we can come up with. So for my individual build, I decided I was going to try something new that I've never seen done before. I'm not even sure if it'll work. It may be an epic fail, but if it happens, we'll see it happen here, and you'll know not to do that. So I've got my skull, number six, from Nightmare Makers, which I will link below. They have a YouTube channel, they have a Facebook page, they have a website. They make awesome products, so go find them. I'll put all the links below in the description, and you can look up everything that we're using here for uh, our videos on the Nightmare Makers uh, website, Facebook page, or their own YouTube page. So go like them and subscribe and, and show them some love, because right now the industry could really use it. So for my project, I decided, I'm going to take my Nightmare Maker's Rigid Foam Skull. Get the bones inside. I'm going to put them on my truck tailgate. I've never seen it done. I don't know if it can be done. I'm going to use the old automotive paint. We're going to put some paint on him. I'm going to shave this skull down. I'm going to mold it right into my tailgate. And I'm going to do some bones. So I'm going to do a classic skull and crossbones motif on my tailgate and mold it in. It's my old work truck, it's on its last leg, so I figure what the hell, I'd show her some love and, and do something creepy and cool for her. So, I'm going to get this tailgate off, get this trim popped off, get my F-150 emblem off, and uh, we're going to do some damage. So, here we go. Okay, YouTube, so I got the tailgate off, I got the cap taken off, I got my emblem taken off. I went ahead and before, first and foremost, I wiped everything down with wax and grease remover because you don't want to go sand and stuff into your paint, contaminants, and anything else. I went ahead and washed the tailgate. I used some prep paste because I'm going to end up re-clearing this whole tailgate overall. And again, this isn't uh, this is my method. This isn't uh, the way you should go out and do your car. I'm really kind of in uncharted territory here with what I'm doing. So don't go tear up your cars. If you're going to try something like this, take it to a licensed professional. I've been doing auto restoration for over 25 years, so I got a pretty good handle on stuff. So don't go destroying your cars and saying cobwebs made me ruin my car. So uh, tailgate's basically ready to go, it's ready for clear, but we just can't go sanding and sticking stuff on there. Uh, again, these are Nightmare Makers Rigid Foam, or it's Bitty Mole Rigid Foam, Nightmare Makers Bones. And uh, we're going to use these, uh, as well as a trio. This is a non-sponsored video, we just really love their product. And this is the way I'm going to do it, or I'm going to attempt to do it, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm just going to use a hacksaw to cut this stuff. I've shown you guys in my other molding videos when I made some of this stuff. So it cuts super easy. I'm going to use just a quarter of the bone because I'm going to do skull and crossbones like a, pi like, a classic, uh, like a classic pirate motif. So I can just shave this stuff down with a hacksaw. And that's how easy it cuts. Look at that. I mean, with just a hacksaw, you could use a regular uh, wood saw, you could use a sawzall, you know, you could cut it with just about anything. Uh, for me, I'm going to go ahead and shave this down. I've got 36 grit because I need a nice tooth back here. I'll show you guys in a little bit when I get these all shaved down to where I'm happy. We're going to use a, a, a fiberglass product on there to make sure these things stick. So I'm going to take 36 grit and just keep flattening the back out. This basically just levels everything. It gives me a nice tooth for the uh, short strand fiberglass to bite into, and that's what we'll end up gluing it to the tailgate with, and then we'll kind of mold it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand all my pieces and basically get them ready to go on the tailgate. I got a center point on top. I've got a little ridge in my uh, tailgate, so I'll have to make do with that when I put the skull on there. And also, my sh I should mention that my tailgate handle I moved years ago, and it's on the inside of the tailgate, so my tailgate's smooth, so yours probably won't look like this. Um, you'd have to shave that too, but now is the perfect time to put something on top of it if you were going to go that route. So I'm going to go ahead and sand and flatten all my pieces and basically get them ready to go on the tailgate. And then I'll show you what I got. We'll kind of line everything up and we'll go on to the next step from there. Okay, YouTube. I went ahead and flat sanded all the bones, shaved them down how I liked them. Kind of fitted them nice to the tailgate and put the little curves to kind of match the tailgate. Uh, I got everything 
just taped into place right now. I numbered the bones, one, two, three, four, so I know how to put them back on. Um, I got everything traced, kind of where I want it roughly. I got everything traced with the black grease pen. I did not want to use magic marker because this will sink into the uh, rigid foam and it'll show later after paint. Same with the tailgate. If you don't get it all off, it will show through your paint later. Uh, not a super big deal, but I just want to bleed through. Um, my next plan is to go ahead and I'll pull one bone off. So I know this is my number one bone. I'm going to take 40 grit sandpaper, 40 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to scuff out this pattern where the bone's at. This is going to give a nice tooth for that uh, fiberglass fiber all to bite into. And I'm going to stick to this. I don't need to go down to bare metal. Uh, I'm going to use that paint as a barrier in case this foam ever cracks and pops off because this is Indiana. We get snow, we get ice. This thing's going to be sitting outside. So I want this thing as full proof as I can get it, even though it's still an experiment. So I'm just going to sand this area so I know that's where my fiber uh, glass is going to go. I'm going to go a little bit, a little bit beyond out that area. As long as I know I get all the grease pen off, grease pencil off, I should be good. So I just want to make sure this is all nice and white, which means I've got the whole area. Just like that, so I'm gonna pull all these bones off. I'm gonna sand out the same area, get them ready to go on, and then we'll get the fiberglass, we'll stick a couple of pieces on, and I'll show you how that's gonna work. Okay, so we're ready to go. This is what I'm gonna use to glue the rigid foam to the tailgate. It's called Fibril. This is very short strand fiberglass. Uh, almost like a dirt glass, but not. It's waterproof, it's strong, it's lightweight. You can mix it a little thicker than body filler. Uh, I would not use body filler to do this if you guys were going to attempt to do this on your own. Um, Body filler is really only made to go on a car about an eighth inch thick, which uh, you don't go mud panels, you don't use this stuff, you don't put over rust. You'll notice that I didn't break through the paint, I just scratched up the surface. Uh, so this will stick to there, so if this stuff does fail and doesn't work, at least I can go back and fix that later and uh, sand my paint, just repaint my tailgate to keep it from falling apart and rotting back out because I burned through all the paint. But this stuff you just burn. Or uh, you just mix it up real good. It's sort of a burnt orange color when it's ready to go. Uh, you basically just mix it up just like body filler. It'll dry rock hard. Uh, it should it should cure very strong, very rock hard, like a boat or um, a Corvette. It's great for repair for Corvette stuff. But uh, it should be good for heat, for cold, because like I said, this truck sits outside. It's my daily driver. Um, if this stuff does crack and fall off. I want something strong that's not going to rot my uh, tailgate back out. So I got to mix it till it's all one even color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to butter up the back of the pieces and I'm going to stick them onto place and smush them into place so that this stuff bites into all those scratches so they don't want to pop off or fall off. So we're going to mix this bad boy up so we get a nice even color. We don't want no streaks in it because that means it's not mixed properly. And then you'll have uh, spots that don't cure and those will take on water or they'll act funny or they'll push the skull off of the tailgate later on. So, I think we're good. I don't know if I can get through all these pieces with this, but we're gonna try. I wanna get that skull on first because that's gonna be my centering point for this whole tailgate and all the bones on it. So, I'll grab the skull, I'm gonna butter him up. He's nice and porous in the back with all these uh, 30 and 46, 36 scr scratches. So I'm just gonna paste this on him, just like so. I don't wanna go real heavy, but just enough to squeeze out of the side so I can take my finger back and mold into it later. I'm gonna put a little bit of an edge on this thing. Since this is just our first coat, I'll go back later and I'll dial it out with my fingers. So, it's just like laying tile or brick. Put it on there, butter it up, we'll smack it on. All right, so we're covered, we're all buttered up. Let's stick her on there. That's my center line. I'm gonna squeeze that around and try to push all this stuff out. That way you know I got a nice bond with the tailgate. So here's my center line, I'm gonna scoot this over just a hair. I'm gonna squeeze out any excess. All right, and I'll go back. I'll just finger smear it a little bit. Just try and make that line disappear. Put 
that back on the board. This will help fill the gap and it'll help uh, give it a nice little substrate to kind of mold this thing into place. Just get as much excess off as possible. I'll put some here where I know another bone's gonna be. And I'll just smooth this out a little bit with my fingers. That should be the best tool you got to use for this. All right, we're gonna let that roll like that. I'm pretty happy with them. Smash them in there. I'm gonna go ahead and use this and put the rest of the bones on before it dries. When I come back, we should have all the bones stuck on there. And uh, this stuff should be curing and hardened up pretty fast. It usually only takes 10, 15 minutes or so. And then we can start kind of sanding some of this back. And if I gotta go back and do a second coat, we'll do some detail work. Okay, YouTube, so I got the uh, skull in place. The fiberglass getting hard, it's drying up. I've been just taking a razor blade and going around trimming up all the excess as much as I can. Leaves me a little bit less sanding to do. Uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is running an 80 grit over all this, take all as much of this excess off as I can, and I'm gonna go back and smooth another skim coat around each bone to make sure that thing is locked in and ain't coming uh, off, or that nothing's gonna get behind it. So I gotta go back and sand everything around here with 80 grit. I'm gonna run another, uh, run another bead of fiberol around everything. And I'll go ahead and do a little bit of Dremel work. I gotta keep in mind that uh, ice and snow gotta be able to sh shed off of this thing. So when he's on the back of the truck, I gotta make sure ice, water, snow, and everything get out of there. So I'll, I'll clean everything up. And uh, when we come back, probably tomorrow, day after tomorrow or so, uh, we'll get ready to put this thing in primer. So I'll show you guys what this thing looks like right before it goes into primer. So I'll see you in a day or two. Okay, so this is the yellow polyester primer that I showed you guys yesterday, the Rust Defender. It's given a kind of a nice hard skin on uh, all the foam. So you really can't tell the difference between the steel and the foam. So I think my next step is to go ahead and 320 grit all this out, block all the primer out, make sure there's no little spots that I don't like. And then I think I'll probably just go ahead and move on to a sealer and then I'll wet sand that and then I'll put uh, the gray, the body color charcoal base right on top of that and then clear everything. So I'll give you guys one closer look before I move on to the next step. It seems like you blended in real nice, so I'm pretty happy with all that. So, so far so good. I don't see any cracks, I don't see the fiberglass pulling away from the steel, so hopefully the fiberglass worked. And now we'll get on to the next step, which will be blocking and sealer. Okay, so I got the tailgate in the paint booth. I went ahead and 320 would everything dry and blocked everything out. I went back over everything overall and wet sanded it with 800, since I know this is gonna be metallic, I'm gonna use uh, 800 grit sandpaper wet. I gotta tack this whole thing off, wipe it down again with wax and grease remover, and then I'm gonna come back and put a coat of um, adhesion promoter over everything. Anytime you're painting anything that's not metal, or even if you're painting plastics, or just anything that's not metal, you can use it for metal too. I just wanna take a chance that this paint sticks and doesn't disrupt anything. So my first coat will be a transparent sealer, or a transparent adhesion promoter, and then I'm gonna come back and put a gray sealer on top of everything, and then paint. So I'm gonna get the adhesion promoter on, which is transparent. I'm gonna go ahead and seal this in a urethane gray, and then we'll come back, we'll take a look at it and check in on it. Okay guys, so we're checking in. I got my uh, transparent sealer on, which was uh, adhesion promoter. I went ahead and put my urethane sealer on top of that. As you can see, the uh, tailgate's got gray in the corners where I'll overlap my paint and the gray sealer in the middle. So it's been about 20 minutes. I'm gonna give this another 20 minutes. I'm gonna go back and give a light sand in between the bones with uh, 800 wet. And I'm gonna start putting the gray color on and then I'll clear it. We'll call this done. And I'll check in with you guys next time after I get the gray paint on it and I get some of this stuff nibbed out a little bit. So I'll see you in a few. All right, you two, that's the base. I got four coats of base on this thing. Blended everything out to the edge. I think I'm just about ready for clear. Everything came out super nice. All my little blended edges around the bones look cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw uh, probably three, possibly four coats of clear on this thing. And the next time you see this bad boy, he'll be on the truck all buffed out. And you'll see my entry for the uh, Nightmare Makers uh, Skull and Crossbones uh, build. Okay, folks, this is it. I am done. I'm sitting on my entry in the uh, Trio of Terror Challenge with the Nightmare Makers Skull and Bones. It's all finished up. I got it buffed out and on the truck. I drove it home last night. So uh, let me show you guys what I came up with for my end of the project of the trio build.
There we go. That's it. Skull and crossbones. Like I said, I got about four coats of clear overall on the skull. Two, two and a half on the tailgate. Uh, it's pretty firm. The modern clear really kind of bites into uh, the foam and gives it that hard coating. It'll get better in about six months. This paint job will be fully cured. Uh, but I don't have any separation. Everything looks good so far. Of course, I haven't been to the winter time yet or anything. So I'll bring you guys in, take a closer look. Let me know what you think. I'm really happy with it. It came out pretty good. The metallic really stands up and looks pretty on the truck. And it's just a factory color, dark charcoal gray. This is base clear, it's urethane paint. But uh, you really can't see no lines in there. It's kind of molded in pretty good. But I'm really happy with it overall. I mean, I hope it st goes through the winter time because we have hellacious winters here in Indiana. So overall, I think it looks pretty cool. Doesn't stick out too far. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. So check it out. All right, guys, I hope you liked it. That's my entry in the Trio of Terror uh, Nightmare Maker Skull and Crossbones Challenge. Um, if you get a chance, we're gonna post all these on the Trio of Terror Facebook page. I'll post it on the Cobwebs and Candlesticks page. Um, go check out my brothers in the Trio of Terror and see what their final builds are gonna be for the same project. Uh, it's Vic Springson on his channel and Dave at the Weird Kids Show channel. And like I said, we're gonna have this on Facebook and uh, we're gonna have all our YouTube videos go up at the same time. So you guys should be able to click over and watch their videos of their entries and our little uh, challenge. Uh, we're not sponsored, we just love their products and we wanted something cool to do amongst the three of us. Uh, to kind of challenge each other and if you guys like this maybe we'll do another one uh, next year if you guys want to see another one just let us know in the comments below so until i see you guys again keep it evil always